You want me to introduce myself? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Sandra Terry, Executive Director, Laurel Civic Association. Born and raised. <laughs> There's a lot of water down here. A lot of water. And now, basically, the only way you can get to it is if you have a boat or if you own land. A long time ago, it was just vacant land, so you just walked across and fished or went to it, but you can't get to it now because it's private property. It was probably private property then, but who cared? There were no houses on it or anything. My poor mother went to her grave wanting to find some place to fish. <laughs> but but you, she couldn't go where she used to go. I mean, she was 91, so she was really used to going, you know, to places where there was nothing. You know, it's, it's just, just the way it is. When people buy land, it's their land. And, you know, now if you don't have a boat, there's not much fishing you can do. You could always fish. That's the way you live. I mean, we had a neighbor across the street from us, and he'd walk down there to the trestle where that Donovan Bridge is now, and he could only carry two or three fish back because they were like huge fish, just gigantic fish and these were sheep at they're not like they used to be I mean we're talking big fish people look at pictures now and they think they've been photoshopped that's how big the fish were so <laughs> seriously <laughs> we would walk down to the trestle and I never took my hot sauce bottle I just got the oysters and ate them like that my sisters and brothers they you walked down and you took your hot sauce with you and you sat there and you ate oysters all day. That was our daily thing. You just went down there and got oysters. I mean, the oyster beds are still there, but there's so much boat traffic that it's full of oil and residue and gas stuff and whatever. So, no, I don't think anybody eats the oysters down there anymore. <laughs> we used to go to the beach all the time. It was wonderful, it was rustic, it was natural, not like now. I mean, there used to be nobody. Well, the best part for me was there was a big old tree that had fallen down on the beach. So it was like a big bench. You could go under it, you could sit on top of it, and you know, and there was a lot of beach. There was no erosion. It was a whole different beach than it is now. I was telling somebody that most of the kids who live in Sarasota County don't go to the beach. They've never seen it. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, how would they get there? Who takes them there? They don't know what the beach is. They don't go to the beach. You know, that's Florida, the beach. But the kids who live in Florida don't ever get to go to the beach. You know, it's like kids don't go normal places like the grocery store or the beach a lot of these kids won't ever have my normal because they won't have my mother <laughs> you know we'll, we'll give them as much of that normal as we can I, I set out that was one of my goals was to get them off the street where they live and get them out there I guess the way we run the place, it's, it's a one big community. Our volunteers are so committed and they really care. They either have lives that were wonderful and they appreciate that so they want to give back, or they have lives where they understand what these kids are going through so they want to make sure that they have a good life. The things that we do kind of make up this little tight-knit community, and it's like an oasis. I always call it an oasis because they feel safe when they come here, and that's the way we want them to feel. I mean, if I went through the year, you know, we start from our day of service for Martin Luther King, and we, and we, we do the Black History Month. 
we do an Easter egg hunt. We do the end of school thing in the summertime. We've got camp. We've got teen empowerment so our teens don't have to sit home all day and do. We do learning by learning because we don't want them losing anything over the summer. On the 22nd, we do our annual health fair. We've got like 20 organizations coming. We do the USDA that day. We do extra food that day. We do the farmer's market that day where we give them free vegetables. Whenever I do something like that, I like to do a whole lot of stuff on one day because the people we serve, a lot of them don't have transportation. They have to catch rides here and do stuff. So I like to do stuff on one day so they can get there because that group of people, they don't have the wherewithal to get up and go somewhere every day to do something different. I watched the people in this community who were older than me and elderly. I grew up around some very intelligent people. And what I do now is what I saw when I was growing up. You know, they had businesses and created businesses and they, they had a their work ethic. They came from good, strong stock. You know, I watch them work and I watch them do as much as they could do and when they couldn't do for themselves then I here I am trying to find a way to get it done for them that's why sometimes when people meet me and they they want to know how I got this way I'm like well you know I came this way I wasn't broken and somebody fixed me because sometimes that's what people think course somebody like me there had to be something wrong with you and somebody taught you and no I came like this <laughs> this is the way I came I think about why I do this a lot and I think it really does come from all those people I grew up with when they saw things that needed to be done they just did them and maybe it is a little bit of perfectionist in me that I want everything to be right and good all the time. I do want everybody to be okay. And they're not okay. And that bothers me. So I guess I set out to try to make sure that at least they have the tools to get okay. And if, if you don't have that, you, you're never going to be okay. So. I guess my thing is I just want everybody to be okay.